Quick and dirty. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, the, also on the inside, we'll see. Some yeah. It's, yeah, I, as I said, I kept it rather dark. Mm -hmm. uh, pull it down here, then glaze it more uh, into a dark tone. Yeah. Very nice. Now. Now. The pants. The pants. All right. All right. I mix some uh, black and rucksack 10. For that on the palette, I will add a little bit of white. It's quite a bit. Yeah, those are the two areas that will catch the most light, and thus they are very bright. Um, for the next step, I'll already take a darker color. Oh, the brush is splitting a little bit. Yes. Yeah. It's very unfortunate, but it sometimes happens, even with the best brushes. But if you pull them together again, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see I've been using this brush also for quite a while and not being very careful. So you can see that with the dried paint on top. So after the session, I think we uh, can clean it with some uh, brush soap. Yeah. Maybe we should get some baby shampoo and conditioner. Yeah, you want to try to avoid to get uh, any paint uh, near the metal, basically. That's 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 usually what kills brushes, because it dries inside the, that area, and then the, there's no way to get the tip back. But uh, with a little tender loving care. <laughs> Actually, see how uh, I mean. This is a very rough um, application. There's no um, no finesse really involved in this whole thing. Um, just first the bright color, uh, then a little darker color, and then just uh, then just went over a couple of things um, to come combine the borders with glazes and stuff. But it's just to really get the first general light impression in there, the way you want it, and you can just push it around as much as you like. <laughs> some black to get that uh, separation line here again because I went a little overboard mm -hmm. okay so yes yeah, Michael just mentioned that this is just the, the very rough uh, placement of lights but this way we have already like a change in the in the base color so we can just now uh, work on with the with the highlights. So I'm adding more white to the base color and I will concentrate your person on the top light here.
What's the uh, consistency of the paint right now? Mm. Uh, so it's not quite a glaze, but uh, almost, huh? Yeah, it's a bit thicker. I would say it's layer, but I don't have a lot of paint in the brush. Yep. So light on that seam line here. Okay. A darker color. So you see a lot of. Um wet and wet going on right now on these pants. See how Ben actually now um, makes the shadows also a little lighter? Uh, which makes a lot of sense because this is the light, most lighted area. And uh, if the shadows were the same kind of uh, level of darkness everywhere, that would look kind of weird. Yeah, and you need the uh, you need really the upper part to be quite a bit lighter than than the lower part. Mm -hmm. So this is already the little darker color again. And just by overlapping between the light and the dark area, you create the blending there. Mm -hmm. and that's why the paints have to be a little thin. So if you're not thinning your paint, uh, of course, then you'll have um, that color with borders. So a very strong highlight there. Mm -hmm. and just compare that with the right leg, uh, which already looked kind of good when uh, Ben did the first uh, colors. But pushing the highlights and um, kind of defining the shadows is just uh, adding so much uh, quality to the miniature. Sort out the light here. That's also a good um, trick or tip if you um, if your blendings are not as smooth, um, yeah, like especially when you're kind of starting off, there might be like a little border here and a little spot there. Um, just taking, um, depending on what you want, either highlight color or usually the medium tone, and just glaze it over the whole surface a little bit uh, will. Um, pull these areas together and uh, you'd be surprised how many little mistakes you can actually hide by doing that. Yeah. Also, if you have um, a too strong variation in the gloss of the color, also the uh, glaze of the medium tone really helps to tie things together. Mm -hmm. For example, here you can see the strong highlight border, and we'll just take some of the medium tone and put it here over, over that place. And also, here you can still see mm -hmm. the darker spot. We're just glazing this over both areas, it'll work just nicely. Even with glaze, it's important uh, the the direction of the stroke. Like right now, the the brightest spots on that part is the very top and the knee. Uh, now the knee is nice because you can kind of pull it over the pull the brush over the uh, edge if you want, and that's then where the pigments will accumulate. Yeah. 
in the way you, um, I mean, you see the sculpt and you, you, you see where there could be a highlight and where there could be a shadow. Um, and it's really a personal preference and choice whether you um, try to make it a little softer, like uh, Ben is doing right now, or whether you actually really exaggerate um, those those highlights. Like, uh, you'll see this in a lot of historical main miniatures with, uh, that have been painted with oil, uh, with very strong shadows and very strong highlights. Um, it's really just a personal preference. Yeah, and it's also a question of uh, what style you want your miniature yeah. to look like in the end. You can see how that whole thing is just being pushed back and forth with the lights uh, until the point that Ben really likes what he's seeing. Like the knee was almost the brightest point a moment ago, now it's uh, a little darker again. Yeah, sometimes especially with, uh, with light cloth and... Um, it's a bit back and forth till the thing looks really like you want it to. Mm. All right. All right. So um, I would just proceed like that and glaze a bit back and forth and uh, also paint the back side here of the mm. pen. Yeah. And we'll be ready once that is done. Awesome. All right.